So last night I was having a dream, and in that dream, I was watching a Nintendo Direct, and Nintendo finally announced Pikmin 4. We finally got the announcement for the Pikmin game that we've been waiting so long for. But then, I realized the whole thing was just a dream. But the next thing that was announced during the Direct was Rihanna's next album. <laughs> I was like, no! I mean, I really want Rihanna to release a new album. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, no! Pikmin 4 is just a figment of my imagination. Will it ever exist? I remember in a past interview, Miyamoto called Pikmin his baby. It was his next Legend of Zelda. And yet, he hasn't been giving that game franchise the love that Zelda's been getting. I mean, come on. I'm a big Zelda fan myself, but... With how many Zelda games they've made over the past like five or six years, can we just give a little bit of that development team to a Pikmin game? I know Pikmin might not make them the most money, but they also haven't really done much to try to make Pikmin a big thing. Pikmin just really hasn't been given a chance, and I feel like the Switch is the perfect platform to give Pikmin the life it deserves, because that game would honestly work so great as a handheld game. It's like Nintendo's perfect barrier to entry for real-time strategy games. It's great and I just really want to see it on the Switch. And I was thinking about it and I was like, what would be the best things for Nintendo to do to make Pikmin 4 a straight up success? To make the game a bop and a half? To knock that crap out of the park? Why am I getting so animated? Because I get excited when I think about Pikmin. They also made this like little awesome cinematic animated experience for Pikmin that truly gave Pikmin a ton of life. Like this franchise has so much capability just to be like, like Pikmin are like a better version of Minions. Minions suck. What are Minions good for? What do they do? They just babbled around and break stuff all the time. What do Pikmin do? They fight for your freedom. They collect treasure and build a business. They take over the entire region with their brain stems. These things are the best plants ever and they deserve better, honestly, quite frankly. <sighs> but what does Pikmin deserving better even mean? That, my friends, is a fantastic question. All right, so to fully determine what needs to be done to make Pikmin 4 the best game in the franchise so far, we need to establish what made the first three games good. What were some other strengths and weaknesses, and what can we learn from them? So the best thing about Pikmin 1 was that it was simple and to the point. It had a concept of crash landing on a planet, collecting the 30 pieces, and escaping as fast as possible. The game was short for experienced players due to the compact level design and learning curve, but it was a much longer journey for beginners who had to learn the game mechanics, all of the enemy patterns, and figure out the layout and puzzles of each area. Because of this, the game had great replay value, as you can play over and over again and try to beat the game in less days, and with as few Pikmin deaths as possible. Pikmin 2 introduced a new level design element by adding dungeons. These were holes found around each level that consisted of 2 to like 17 sub-levels. Although Pikmin 2 had about 4 main areas and Pikmin 1 had 5, Pikmin 2 is a much, much longer game due to the fact that it has like 20 dungeons spread amongst its levels. Pikmin 2 is a very fun game and is overall better than the first game due to improved game mechanics and better Pikmin AI, but the game lacks in replayability because of how long and repetitive it is. And then in my opinion, Pikmin 3 found a better sweet spot. So Pikmin 1 had 30 ship pieces, Pikmin 2 had 201 pieces of treasure, and Pikmin 3 had 66 pieces of fruit, so it was a little bit more in the middle, a bit more of a sweet spot, the game had a better length to it, it still feels replayable, it's not too long, I think it kind of did a good job. Now for me, the best part of Pikmin 3 was the mission mode, which were these little areas that were kind of like excerpts from different levels, and then they added DLC as well that added completely new areas that they would fill with fruit and different enemies, and you would be given a time limit to try to get all of the pieces back to your ship. This mode had so much replay value and you could just do this over and over again and I think this is like the best arcade style for Pikmin. On top of that, Pikmin 3 had a great multiplayer mode with Bingo Battle which gave you a bingo card full of different fruit and enemy carcasses and you would be given a map and you and somebody else would fight to try to get four things in a row and you'd have to fight over different pieces of fruit and you could like knock out tiles. It's a freaking blast. And with all that said, I'm gonna put my favorite elements from Pikmin 1, 2, and 3 into the best opportune Pikmin 4 sequel for the Nintendo Switch. So let's start off with the story. It's a year past the events of Pikmin 3, and the Hakotations decide to colonize Earth. The president sends Olimar and Louie 
down to Earth to start a small little space station that they're going to expand over time. While they're there, they're going to continue to search for more treasures that they're going to send back to Hakotate to make money to send more additions to the space station. So in this game, you're not going to go up into outer space in between each day anymore. You're instead going to stay in your space station and it's going to be in the middle of a gigantic map and you got to get back inside before the end of the night. But it's pretty well guarded. You got some artillery this time. You didn't crash land here anymore. You're starting to set up. We're starting to colonize this place. There's so much potential and resources. The president is all in. So you're in the central hub and there's going to be eight different areas. So you're going to have these eight different areas around you that all have different themes, but they're all going to kind of like fit into the same seasons. So Pikmin 2 had seasons. We're not going to really focus on seasons here. It's just all going to be just different like types of areas. Like one area could be a pond. What could be more of a field? One could start to get into like the edge of a city, like maybe an old town where you feel like you're going around just different types of man-made structures. There's lots of opportunity for this, and I feel like there's a lot of creativity that can be had. And you slowly push through into each area. You don't just like go into one and go all the way back. You kind of like inch your way through them, and then there's bosses in each that get progressively harder. And each one will have like a big boss at the very very end and once you beat the big bosses you'll get gigantic pieces of treasure that'll give you lots of money now the money which is called pokos you're gonna want to get a lot of that because you're gonna be able to use that to buy really really good upgrades i'm talking about the ability to buy new living quarters to be able to have more captains come down and stay with you and being able to have more captains on the field up to four it's pikmin four let's have four captains on the field let's start making this game meta it has that potential also, video game limitations are bigger. Let's buy the ability to have more than 100 Pikmin on the field. Let's just start going crazy with this. Let's get up to two to 300. Let's have the ability to be able to increase the amount of Pikmin on the field by like 10 at a time or something. Let's buy some like scientific equipment that can take the different types of nectar and like combine them and give you like different upgrades for your Pikmin to make your Pikmin just wild out in different ways. Let's have the ability to have some turrets that expand past the walls of your main base that go further on, and you can eventually buy turrets that will kill all the enemies in that area, so you don't have to go and clear the area and clear out enemies that like come back to life. You can buy these turrets that'll just be set up, and if anything tries to come back towards your base, it'll destroy them. So you actually have the ability to fully clear the area and like make it safe and habitable. The potential of building like some sort of miniature space colony for yourself can have so much potential. And I think it'd be a really cool incentive to keep collecting treasure and expanding your colony and your space station. Now this game isn't gonna start off and baby you like the other three games. If you wanna get a tutorial on how to play Pikmin, play Pikmin 1, 2, or 3. Those games walk you through the beginning way too easily. This game is going to just go ahead and start you off with red, yellow, and blue Pikmin, and it's going to give you a text box that say red Pikmin are fireproof, blue are waterproof, and yellow can withstand electricity. And it's just going to teach you that, and you have to remember, we don't need to get them one at a time, learn what they do, learn how to pluck sprouts, no. Let's get, let's just cut to the chase, let's get to the gameplay, we don't need to see all these little like weird things, we're past that. But like I said, the map will be one gigantic map, so your captains can spread out, and you can try to tackle different areas at different times. Because once you unlock like different Pikmin with different abilities, because I feel like there could be a lot of different Pikmin if you're like expanding all the other things and you're having like a base, and they don't need to all go up into the sky every single night, because I don't like that. I don't want to do that in a fourth game. I'm, I'm over it. But having different captains and like being able to split them up and everything, I think you'd be able to really have this ability to make the game like really fun to learn and master and get better at and it would make it fun for speedrunners to try to master like the techniques and to try to find the best routes through the game because there'll be like a lot of puzzles set up that require different types of Pikmin so you kind of got to like really strategize and figure out the best routes for everything. So in my opinion, some of the best video games are the ones that are fun for beginners, but also really fun for masters. So I think another way to make the game fun for beginners is to add personality through a lot more interesting cutscenes, because we've seen through these little cinematic animated things that Nintendo made, they're pretty capable of making some pretty awesome cutscenes for Pikmin. So if you combine these with the gameplay, you could have so many events where some of the beasts try to come attack you and you have like little miniature wars and there's so much potential to add lots of charm and character to the Pikmin universe. But to make the game fun for people who are trying to beat the game quickly, let's make it so we can just skip all these cutscenes. Let's make it so we can get through it all fast. Let's make it so you can get through the tutorials quickly so the game is actually really fun to just replay over and over again. Let's like just cut out the bull crap, okay? Because there's so many times where I'm like, I want to play Pikmin 2. that I'm like, oh wait, no I don't because I don't want to have to go through the first two days of the Valley of Repose again because that sucks. 
Now looking at the amount of treasure that's in the other three games, I would say the perfect sweet spot for the amount of treasure for Pikmin 4 to have will be 120 pieces of treasure. And once you get all of these, you unlock one more piece of treasure, that's the 121st, that's in a crazy just like side level that you unlock by being able to get all the treasures. And it's like a super final trial, kind of like in Pikmin 1, how we had that like final trial level, or like how the 3D Mario levels have just like a final, just really difficult level. I think Pikmin 4 should have that because this game has the potential to just throw some stuff at you. I think having this amount of treasure would make this game perfectly replayable, especially if the gameplay was quick and snappy and you could get past all the cutscenes really quickly. I feel like this would be a game that you would just want to replay over and over and just get better and better at, which would give the Pikmin franchise the best possible potential. And I think if all of this is done right and combined with the mechanics and charm of Pikmin 3, especially if they put in the effort to make Pikmin 4 bosses as large and creative as the Pikmin 3 ones, I think Pikmin 4 could just be the most amazing game ever and could really just bring so many fans to the franchise. I think this game franchise has the potential to be one of Nintendo's tops if they make a good game and market it correctly. Now apart from the story mode, there's a couple side modes that I think would be good. I think we should bring mission mode back and have even more missions and give more opportunity for that because I think those are what made Pikmin 3 amazing. I even did a series on my channel where I only played Pikmin 3 mission mode and I tried to get the best possible rank of platinum on every single level and it was freaking fun as heck. I would pretty much keep that the same, I don't think anything needs to change there, I think they nailed it. I would also like to see the return of Bingo Battle, but with a bit more customizations for the game rules, and also online mode. It's so hard to find people in real life to play Pikmin with, so please give us online mode for Pikmin, I beg you. But in Bingo Battle, there's these little cherries you can collect and they give you these little attacks, like giving you extra Pikmin or sending a barrage of rocks down on the other team. I think it'd be nice to be able to just like customize the l items that can show up there and stuff. And also in Pikmin 2 in the battle mode, I remember you were able to attack each other with different enemies like Wallywogs and Blowhogs and a little jellyfish. Bring that back. Like attacking each other with the enemies was fun. I loved doing that. I'd like to see the return of that and just a bit more expansion in that mode. And then maybe some other multiplayer modes as well because I think there's a lot of potential with the types of game modes that you can have. Like there's lots of real-time strategy games out there that they could draw inspiration from for sure. And I have one more mode idea that I think would be really amazing and it's kind of inspired from like Ratchet and Clank and that is like a Colosseum mode where you're attacked by waves of enemies and it'd be cool if you started off with just say like a hundred Pikmin and you got to choose what Pikmin you brought into the Colosseum and you just see how far you can make it. It just like goes in waves and you just see how long you can survive. And there can be like different modes and different difficulties. I think there's so much that you could do with that. But with that being said, that is a lot of my ideas for Pikmin 4. I have other things just like racking around in my brain, but I should probably wrap this video up. But I want to continue this discussion in the comments below. So let me know down in the comment section below if there's any ideas that you have for Pikmin 4 or anything that you think they should change to make the game even better. Or let me know what you think of my ideas. Did you like them? Did you hate them? Did you think they were all right? Let me know and we can figure this out together. Yo, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. I will find you if you don't. Also, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your brainstem and make me reach a million subscribers or else. <laughs>